Hello guys, it's the Green Bookworm, and today I'll be giving you a review for A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. So, A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking is a popular science book and a non-fiction book about cosmology, the, about discussing briefly the way we view the world from the ancient times all the way to now, the different theories behind our cosmological model, so our way of viewing the universe, and its implication on modern physics. The book deals with outlandish and enormous topics, as the title already suggests, but Stephen Hawking does so in a way that is so less technical than textbooks would. He writes about things such as um, general relativity, time travel, and the origin and end of the universe in a way that everyone can understand what he's talking about. He used anecdotes and um, references to, to deliver the message without bogging it down with technical um, jargon and the math. This book is a quite popular book in the popular science genre for good reasons. The writing is incredible and this is the updated version as you can see I think right there. So without further ado, let's get into the pros and cons of the book. So for this one, I want to do it slightly different. So I don't want to jump into the cons, I want to jump into the pros at first place. So the first pro is that, well, the book is very well written. Everyone can understand what he's talking about. Even when he gets into the details, such as when he gets to quantum mechanics and how particles behave, um, the different quarks that makes up fundamental particles and stuff like that. So another pro would be that the book is fairly short. That isn't really significant when reading such a book because when reading such a book, when you're actually very curious to know about these topics, you wouldn't mind about the book size, but with this book, it kind of helped because it made it an easy breeze. You can easily go through it without any hassle. The last pro is, well, basically the topics themselves. And now on to the cons or the ones I can find at least. I can't think of a lot actually. One of the cons isn't really even a con. It's, the, it's just a nitpick and I think it's probably the only con I could come up with. And that is if you're already familiar with the topics, let's say if you already b read books, um, such as um, A Short History of Nearly Everything by Bill Bryson, I think, or especially a book such as The Elegant Universe by, by Brian Greene, then the things discussed in this book wouldn't be that new to you. You'd already be familiar with them. The only thing is, and again comes to the pros, that Stephen Hawking explains it in a much clearer language in comparison to Brian Greene in The Elegant Universe. And also he doesn't deal that much with string theory, which is super theoretical at this point. And now beyond the pros and cons, the topics I found really interesting in A Brief History of Time, since this is a non-fiction book. The chapter I'd say that hooked me the most well, aside from almost every chapter, um, was the chapter on the arrow of time, where Stephen Hawking discussed the different arrows of time. So one arrow of time is the natural, you could say, arrow of time, and that is um, due to the second law of thermodynamics that entropy increases as um, time passes. So things that are order tends to get into a state of disorder. That is the natural way of things. And that is a way for physicists to objectively measure time, you could say, that everything goes from a state of order to disorder. That is why the arrow of time always points forward. The second um, arrow of time is our human perceptual arrow of time. How we view things, how we remember the past but can't remember the future. And the third arrow of time is the arrow of time of the expansion of the universe itself. So that concept I found it really interesting and also how Stephen Hawking tends to explain his own theories, which is the theory of the Hawking radiation, how black holes aren't as infinite as we taught them to be, that black holes also have some sort of entropy, that they also cease to exist at some point. That is rad, but very interesting. The topic that I found actually the most interesting in this whole book was the topic of singularities as well, which tends to be more of a mathematical model when you think about it, but it also comes to play with physics when you get to 
a breaking point. When you get to a point where physics stops making sense, such as when you talk about the, um, the center of a black hole. When you get past the event horizon, you reach more and more towards a singularity where mass supposedly increases to infinity, but we know that in the physical world you can't really have infinities because then your physical model would break. It wouldn't make sense in the physical world. And also the topic of singularity also comes up in this book um, dealing with physics when he talks about the Big Bang because the Big Bang is a space-time singularity. The idea is that the universe is expanding and there's observational data which confirms this from Edwin Hubble um, how the galaxies are moving away at a faster rate from us and this is apparently the same no matter where you are in the universe. This phenomena which confirmed that the universe is expanding and also made Einstein's theory of relative, general relativity much more purer um, is also what confirms that if the universe is expanding then that must be if you reverse the arrow of time everything was at one point closer and closer together and if the universe expanded forever as we, if we assume that means that everything at one point was almost crushed with infinite amount of density at one single point in space time and that is of course the initial moment of the universe the beginning of time the big bang so as you can already see i had a lot of fun with this book i could have also mentioned of, on how the last topic kind of briefly touched on string theory I already had enough of string theory from the elegant universe so i don't need to go into a lot of that unless you guys want a video on that sometime later but all in all i gave this book a four out of five stars on goodreads and the only reason i didn't give it a five out of five was because well i was already familiar with the topic so it wasn't anything new but the writing style alone made me give it a high rating because it truly, truly deserves the high rating. So that's it for my review of A Brief History of Time Guys by Stephen Hawking and look forward to my other reviews and videos and right now I'm currently reading The Drawing of the Tree, the second Dark Tower book and I'm enjoying it so far. So stay tuned and see you guys soon. Bye.